You have to stay firm on your outcome and flexible on how you get there. It was the most beautiful, perfect, incredible fall day in the Yosemite Valley. As we stood in a circle that was created by rocks, rocks that had words of wishes, hope, and love written upon them by our dearest friends and family. And there I stood, holding the hands of my beloved, of my grant, seeing my entire world be completed and understood. And as I looked into his eyes, I knew that together we could move mountains. Side by side, we could change the world, achieve our dreams and goals. And I knew that it was my mission to empower him to live his dreams, to be his highest version. I knew that we'd forever be by each other's side. It was both a feeling of excitement for the future and contentment for the moment we were in. It truly was an exhale. And I knew in that moment that I would do anything for this man, my best friend, my soulmate, my true north, and now my husband. And then five months later, on March 5th, as I was holding his face in the ICU, as he told me with tears in his eyes that he couldn't feel or move anything from the belly button down, that he had broken his back while snowmobiling with friends in the Sierra backcountry, there was only one thought that came to my mind, and that was the pure love and the promises that we had made. And there was no way that I was going to let something like a spinal cord injury stand in the way of that or alter my feelings or even alter the dreams and goals that we had. Now at that time, and even a little bit still to this day, people say to me, it's just so amazing that you're staying by his side, that you've stayed by his side. And these comments sound like a foreign language, and I consider myself to be a pretty smart cookie, but my brain could not wrap itself around what they were saying. I just didn't understand. Because for me, there never has been, and nor will there be anything else other than a pure, undying love I have in my heart. It is a love that can best be described as my soul's purpose, my mission in life, to love and be loved. It is a love that can see into the future, and it is this love, our unwavering belief, and my husband's incredible determination that has moved us from that moment, from the moment that I remember so clearly when they told me that my husband would never be the same. But they didn't know us. They didn't know what we had already experienced and achieved in life. They didn't know that he had the focus of a nanotechnologist, the determination of a professional athlete, and they didn't know that I had just spent the last 15 years of my life in the fitness industry as a certified personal trainer with my degree in health ecology exercise physiology from the University of Nevada, Reno. They didn't know that at the age of 13, I had a vision to open and create a wellness center, which I did at the age of 28. A wellness center whose whole mission and desire and goal was to give people the environment and tools to reach their health, fitness, athletic, and well-being goals. They didn't know us, they didn't know our love, and really, how would they? So when they said that my husband would never be the same, well, they were right. He is not the same. He is a man that has worked his way from a wheelchair to a walker to a set of crutches to walking in two canes. He is a man that has made the positive, the conscious choice to continue being that same positive and motivated person he always was. And he is a man that has paddled 32 miles across the Molokai Channel from the Hawaiian Islands of Molokai to Oahu in the World Championship Sur Surf Ski Race. And he is a man that it has made it his life mission to empower others to see their greatness and to infuse this world with positivity. And he is a man that has done something in history that no one else ever has. He is a man that pushed himself and became the first athlete with a spinal cord injury to push himself 80 miles, the final degree of latitude, to the geographic South Pole on the 100-year anniversary of one of the first explorers, Britain's Sir Robert Falcon Scott, all in the name of spinal cord injury recovery. He made history on history. So no, he is not the same. None of us will ever be the same. I'm not the same as I was five minutes ago. We are always changing, and we get to choose what fuels that change. For us, being told that Grant was never going to be the same, well, that was just more fuel to a fire 
that was already lit to choose at all costs to recover, to choose to get him running, kayaking, snowmobiling, and us dancing the waltz once again. So yes, absolutely, my husband is not the same man. He is a man that I am proud to say that just two nights ago at a University of Nevada Reno Wolfpack basketball game, walked to the center of the court with just a cane in one hand and holding my hand in the other. For the first time in three years, I got to walk by my husband's side holding his hand. Because you see, it's those little things. It's the little everyday things that change us forever. So no, he is not the same, I am not the same. You won't be the same as you were yesterday or even as you are in this moment right now. So who will you choose to be? So take the time and be okay taking the time to get to know yourself, to take care of yourself. And remember that no one else other than you will give you permission to do this. No one else will validate you or your personal power. It is up to you to define who you are and how you want to impact this world. When I met Grant, I wasn't looking for love. I wasn't looking to find my soulmate. But because I had found a balance within me, because I had done the work to be okay with me, with my path, my purpose, my mission, I could see him. I could see his path and his mission. Now, don't get me wrong. I am by no means perfect or Pollyanna. I make mistakes. I miss workouts. I don't always say the right thing. And I get down on myself when I know I'm not being my highest version. And in that vein, believe it or not, I used to think that the word hope was a powerless word, much like the word try. It was a get-out-of-jail-free card. It was try dressed up in a tuxedo. It was a word that allowed you to have one foot in and one foot out. It was a word that allowed me to not have fear of failure, but rather a fear of success. And little did I know that the word hope would become the most powerful word in my vocabulary. Dr. Barbara Fredrickson says, hope literally opens us up and removes the blinders of fear and despair and allows us to see the bigger picture, thus allowing us to be creative and have a belief in a better future. It is this word hope that I thought of when they told me that Grant had burst fractured his first lumbar vertebrae, sustained a spinal cord injury, and like he says, instantly entered the world of spinal cord injury recovery. It is the word hope that gave me the courage and strength to believe in a different outcome for my husband and our life together in an otherwise, your future will now be this world. And at the same time, people around me were talking about false hope. What does that mean anyways, and how does such a thing exist? It is said that false hope is hope based entirely around a fantasy. Well, I can tell you this, what we were living was no fantasy, and therefore, any outcome we would receive or create would not be a fantasy either. And quite frankly, if enduring times of struggle and challenge, we don't have hope, we don't have the belief that something impossible is possible, then what do we have? The idea that greatness can occur at any moment is what fuels the human spirit. It's what drives us to get out of bed every day, to live, to dream, and to empower the people around us. It is the word hope that became my battle cry to awaken the warrior, the leader within me. The warrior that I knew was always there, but now was being called upon. Napoleon once said, a leader is a dealer in hope. Well, I had just become a very determined hope dealer. We are the warriors of our own lives, and we get to choose to be a dealer of hope. We all have that warrior within us, and if we are lucky enough, that warrior gets to empower another human being. Because you see, I believe the greatest gift we can ever be given is to be of service to another human being. And so here I was, being given this incredible gift, the opportunity to stand for the power of hope for not just any person, but for the person that I loved most in this world, my true north, my husband. So what do you do when you find yourself blindsided by an, an, an event in life? And events occur all the time, every day, big and small. An event can be that you ran out of gas or that you didn't finish a work project that had a hard deadline. It can be closing the doors on a dream. Or it could be getting a phone call that you never expected but knew you had been preparing your entire life. There's only one answer. There is only one thing to do. 
You stay firm on your outcome, on what you want in life, and you choose to be flexible on how you get there. Now, Grant and I had very clear goals and very clear paths of how we wanted to impact the world, how we wanted to make a difference. And as I stood in the ICU, there were two things that I knew. Our life had seriously just changed, but our love and the promises that we had made just five months earlier had not. There is no point in fighting the event, fighting the present moment. It will not change the event, nor will it change the moment you are in. The only thing to do is to just move forward. Movement is the essence of life, and if in that moment I decided to be paralyzed, gripped, and strangled by that event, then that simple yet powerful moment in time would control my life, our life, forever. But I knew, I knew that if we could just get moving, if we could move as gracefully and powerfully as we could from one moment to the next, fully embracing, not fighting the one we were in, then I knew we would succeed. It's like Dory the fish in Finding Nemo, just keep swimming. Very wise fish she was. And now this concept and this thought of movement was something I was very familiar with. I had been teaching people to move, to move their bodies, their minds, their thoughts in the direction of their goals. My philosophy and career was based in movement. And my entire world, based on movement, came to a whole new level. The movement of thought, the movement of a tiny flicker of muscle in Grant's legs, the movement of increased feeling and sensation by mere inches, the movement of love, the movement of happiness, the movement of strength. Life is always moving. Look around you right now. We are all moving. So, how do you choose to move through this life? Do you choose to move frantically and stressed out? Do you choose to move with friends? Or do you choose to move alone? You truly get to choose how you move through the moments and events of your life. And what do the movements of your life say about you? And what do you want your movements to leave behind? For me, I choose my movements to leave ripples of love, of hope, of strength, and of joy. What ripples will you create with the movement of your life? When Grant was first hurt, people would say to me, go take care of yourself, take some time off. Well, now for me, the best way I found I could take care of myself was to be there for Grant, was to give him everything I had. Because for me, my love for Grant is the greatest force in my life. By loving him, I am loving myself. He is the inspiration of my heart and the fuel to my fire. So find what fuels your heart and gives life to your dreams and goals and infuse your everyday life with that fire because you are a being of love and light here to make a difference. You are here to do something that only you can do in the way in which you will do it. Give yourself the same love and compassion that you give to others. And above all else, I want you to remember this. As you move throughout your day, throughout your life, remember that you get to choose how you show up. You get to choose what the ripples of your movements leave behind. And you get to choose what fuels your heart and fire. Because what you do makes a difference. You make a difference. You are all warriors. Warriors of change, of hope, and the greatest of all, Love. Thank you. Namaste.